So in this video, we're going to look at the new Microsoft Parent Connect app. So this is built into your Teams, it already exists, and it's something you can enable, which in this, in this guide, we're going to go through how you can enable that on your tenant. So you'll see that you get the extra Parents app inside each class team. And this can be turned on or off for individual teachers. So you can set it as a policy, so you don't have to have it enabled for everybody at once. And you'll see the parents are brought in. These are the same parents that you're using for the Parental Digest email. Uh, the parents that come in through Microsoft School Data Sync. So again, really important that you have that set up so you can pull across the parent data as well as the classes and the students. So this should already be populated for you. So I've only got a few test parents in here under um, this user here, Susan Abbott. And I can start a conversation, as a teacher, I can start a conversation with those parents of that child. So I can send a message here. Um, I can say, uh, Susan was um, excellent in class today. Well done. And that message will be sent as a email to the parents. Um, with a link to join Teams, the free version of Teams. When they click on that link, it'll ask them to create a personal uh, Teams home account, um, which they create separate to any work accounts they currently have. So it doesn't get mixed up between any work accounts parents may have. When they accept that, they sign up and they accept the email, it will then let them into Teams and it will appear as a chat uh, for that class. So you'll have a different chat message pop up and you can go back in your chat history as well as a teacher and you can pick up where you left off with that conversation with those parents. Um, there is the ability to uh, block external users if you needed to in the future. And if any of those parents leaves um, the SDS sync, you will get a message, a banner appear across the top to notify you that some, some of the parents in that chat are no longer listed as a parent for that child. So it's got the basics in here. Microsoft are looking to add more in the future. So potentially things like announcements and SMS messages are on the roadmap. Um, so that will really help improve that parent engagement. So today we're going to look at how you can turn this on um, in, inside your tenants, which it's available now to use. So this is our class team. As you can see, there is no parents uh, app on here. I've just got the standard class notebook assignments, grades, and insights. So we're going to try from scratch turning this on. And there's a number of steps that we need to follow. And there is uh, some documentation on the Microsoft site that I'll be following. Um, so we'll put a link in the, in the video post as well on how you can get to this. So the first thing we need is school data sync set up, and that's a whole sort of topic in itself. Um, in particular, it's a CSV based integration works at the moment, but one roster will support it soon as well. So um, we need to make sure we have the parents and guardians uploaded into school data sync. And you may have already done this if you've got the parental digest working. So inside school data sync admin center, you should have your profile set up and it should be syncing the data including the parents um, into school data sync. So that's the first thing you need to make sure is set up. And I'm going to assume you've already got that. But again, we've got some separate videos on how to set up school data sync. We've then got the policies we need to set up in the admin center. So one thing this does depend on is having external access turned on. Um, so to do that, we go into the Teams admin center. And inside here, we go to Users, um, External Access, and I've currently got it to allow all external name uh, domains. Um, people in my organization can communicate Teams users who accounts aren't managed in an organization. So I've got that ticked, and um, that's turned on. Um, now, you may not want to turn that on, and if you don't, then obviously you can't get access to the, the new parent feature because it's contacting parents that are outside of your organization with their own home accounts. So again, that's one thing we need to make sure uh, that we do. Um, and that's probably the easiest way to find that. Um, 
there is the option here that you could set uh, if you want uh, to protect maybe teachers privacy make it so the parent can't see if they're online or not then you can turn on the privacy mode using PowerShell as well so that's the the command there that uh, will do that so um, that will allow parents uh, teachers to have some downtime obviously they can snooze a Teams app when they're away from work so they don't get messages come through outside of working hours um, but also the parent isn't going to see that the teacher's online and then get annoyed that they're not messaging them straight away. So again, we do definitely recommend uh, enabling that privacy mode so that um, external users can't see the presence of the organization users. So this is where we need to turn on and make sure that the policies are set up correctly. And it also means that you can actually decide which uh, users will see this new feature. So to do that, um, we need to run the, the Teams PowerShell module. So I'm going to copy that and paste it into my PowerShell window. So I've done that and um, you, you may have noticed I had an error with the allow clubber. Um, I can just remove that and it should be okay. It just means it overwrites the commands that were previously installed on, on the machine. If you get an error about allow pre-release, you may need to update PowerShell get and your Microsoft Teams PowerShell version, close the PowerShell window and open it again. And then you should have that set up. So that's now connected. And I'm just gonna copy these commands as well. I'm gonna to connect to um, Teams PowerShell. So it's connected. Now, when I turn this on, it's going to turn it on for everybody. Um, so that's why I may decide to create some policies um, at a user level to restrict who can have that external access. Um, and it's this enable teams consumer access, which is going to be the policy setting that we, t that we turn on at a user level. Now, if you've created some policies, um, you may have a number of different policies on, on your system. And you can find out which policies you've got by using this command get uh, policy. So just run that, get CSXL policy. I can see here that I've got the global policy. All new users added into tenant will go into that global policy standard. Any of uh, historical users might be added on onto um, the federation and PIC default. Um, that's sort of a historical one. Um, and uh, we need to change the access uh, settings for those policies and need to make sure that users are assigned to them. Um, you may have your own policies on here as well. So we can enable this. So if I wanted to set this uh, for a particular policy, I can just uh, copy that command, type in the identity of the policy so it might be my global policy or whatever policy it is it might be some sort of restriction policy of entity and then i can add in the enable uh so the one one we're looking for is enable teams consumer access there you go and i can set that to true or i can set it to false so you could have some users with access to it, some without access to it while you test it. It's probably a good idea not to let, uh, for example, students have access to it uh, just because it opens up external access. Um, and then we can either assign that external access policy to a user. Obviously, my users are already on global. They're already on the other policy that already have access, so I, I don't need to worry too much about that. Um, so that's all set up for me, but I could use these extra command lines to uh, to check the settings. Um, and again, I can set the configuration uh, settings for the entire tenant if I wanted to as well, which I've just done in the admin interface, so I don't need to worry about that. So I now need to turn on the, the parents app in the Teams admin center. So uh, again, we go back into the admin center. We go to manage apps. And I just do a search. And again, you might have some settings in here that restrict your search and restrict what uh, apps roll out. So again, you may need to look at that. See, the standard is blocked by a publisher. So you have to allow it 
for it to work. So until you allow it, it's not going to be available for anyone else to add onto the tenant. So I allow that, click allow. And again, I can add some policies if I needed to. So I can allow and block apps to the admin center. So I can also control who has access to that app itself um, in addition to those previous settings. So it's it can be set by those, again, Teams policies, the app policies, if you needed to. So that should be everything, as long as obviously your other settings aren't restricting it. So that should be fine. Um, now, you may need to clear cache to see this uh, appear inside Teams, inside our Teams interface. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And there we go. The Parents app is now available. I can click on it. I'm only going to see parents in here that have synced to school day to sync. In this example, I'm not sure I've got I've got a few parents here for Susan. No one else has got any parents in the in school day to sync. So theirs is grayed out. We have to go back and add it into your MIS or whatever's uh, completing your sync. And I can come in here and I can then message those parents. And the parent can obviously get that sign up that sign up email. And this is a quick uh, screen screen grab of what the email looks like. So um, this is one I made pre uh, earlier. It says hello parents of Susan Abbott. So it shows me the start of the message. You can click go to Teams. I'll sign up for the free, free account. And it will then connect me to my children. And then I can communicate with uh, or reply back to any teachers that start a conversation with me. So I can't look up teachers. I can't find them that way. I can only reply back to conversations that have already been started. So I hope that's been useful and uh, I'm sure we'll we'll see lots of improvements and developments uh, in the Parent Connection app from Microsoft over the coming months. Um, I know that a lot of UK MIS systems already have this these features built in where you can message and um, you can communicate with parents and probably a load of other features as well. But this will improve and potentially might include other useful things in the future. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on.